This is Echo 3, and let's discuss tandem rotor helicopters. Welcome back to the hangar. Here, we'll be making a CH-47 inspired transport helicopter. The body of the aircraft is pretty simple. We have a Mark III cockpit, a large cargo bay, and a cargo ramp. You may choose to be more accurate in your replicas, but for this tutorial, the goal is functionality. Next, we'll add some large landing gear. Due to the amount of payload that this can carry, the large ones are the right size. I am placing them on the flat side of the fuselage to make sure that they are placed squarely. Now the next step is not really needed. I am placing some structural tubes on the sides to better mimic the look of the Chinook helicopter and to cover the landing gear. If we were going to be using a liquid fueled engine, then these could be replaced with fuel tanks. I, however, intend to use the electric powered rotors to propel our blades. This would mean that the design could be used on Duna or Eve as well. Although you may need to make some modifications to make it work uh, as well as you need it to. Now I had some kind of weird symmetry issue when I tried to place the last tube. You can see my symmetry tutorial for some interesting ideas there. These structural tubes could flop a bit during flight, so I'm making sure to secure the ends with struts. Moving the landing gear level with the floor, we can see exactly how far the cargo ramp will need to open. But we're going to make sure we use some auto struts here. If you have enabled not if you have enabled advanced tweakables, you'll have the option to use auto struts and they are a wonderful tool in the game. So I would recommend enabling advanced tweakables and being able to have access to auto struts in the game. If my ramp actually opened too far, it would make the uh, aircraft kind of pop up in the back end. So I'm trying to keep it so it only opens at the same level as the gear. We can place a nose cone on the front and get ready to put on our engines. Since I intend to use the largest helicopter blades, we can use the heavy rotors. I'm using the cargo floor to place this one because the floor is a nice flat surface on which to attach. I want to make sure my rotors are placed perfectly straight. Once the rotor is placed, we can set it as needed. I select the three attachment points and reduce the size a bit. Later on, I do increase the size from what is shown here. Now we can attach our blades. This engine and these blades are set up clockwise. And I'm going to put a little nose cone on here for aesthetic reasons, not really needed. If you have seen any of my other designs, you will know that the Cal 1000 is instrumental in how I make the crafts easy to fly. And we'll uh, make sure we add some struts on here. Well, I want to keep these rotors very secure because uh, if they wobble around, it makes flight very difficult. All right, with the Cal 1000, we're going to start setting up our action groups. I bind the rotor power to the RCS key, makes turning on and off a lot easier. And I'm going to unbind the rotors from the brakes and use the abort action group for the rotor brakes instead. That way the brakes are only for the landing gear. The cow play position is bound to the main throttle and the blade deployment angle is bound to the cow 1000. I'm also going to bind the cargo ramp to action group zero uh, just to make it a little easier to operate. When you select the blades you can see that they have options for what control authority you would like to have. The game then auto assigns the cyclic and collective for you. It would be better if I could assign all of those values for myself. In this case, uh, well in this design anyway, you can see that while yaw control is an option, the game doesn't actually use it. The easiest way to overcome this is to just use the overpowered reaction wheels. I did try using a Cal 1000 and adjusting the rotor speed and torque and bound that to the uh, yaw controls. I was able to make a workaround to make it function 
This, however, was more complicated than I wanted to get into for an introductory tutorial. Since this is an electric helicopter, we will need means to generate electricity. This particular setup is going to be okay in full sunlight, uh, but when I tested it at dusk and dawn, it did drain a little faster than um, what it produced, but this worked all right for, um, for now, and we got plenty of batteries, so it, it's uh, fine for longer flights. The center of lift here represents the center of the upward force generated by the propellers. If you have wings on your helicopter design, this indicator will not be accurate. You could try mounting some jet engines on your rotors and use the center of thrust indicator to help you balance your design if need be. I'm wanting my center of mass to be directly in between my rotors. I mounted the back rotor to the fuselage and offset it to its current position because it wobbled too much when attached to the top of the battery stack. Maybe more struts would have fixed my issues because, well, you know, more struts is usually the answer. I'm also going to end up adding a couple of RTGs for good measure. If you were to fly something like this on Duna or Lathe, then you would need even more RTGs. The current amount of solar panels is enough if I am in direct sunlight here on Kerbin, but anywhere else you're going to have to account your electrical generation needs. I also found that with a payload, the spring strength on the landing gear needed to be increased. Uh, you're going to have to adjust your landing gear as you see fit. The game doesn't always auto detect the spring strength very well, so, you know, testing is key and I have tested several designs before I came out with this tutorial. And I think we're looking pretty good here. Um, a note here on how I set up the Cal 1000. I have the blade angle set to go from minus 1 to 12. Now those deployment angles worked pretty well, although probably minus 3 to 10 would have worked better. I kind of found out that uh, it didn't descend very quickly and I wanted a more responsive craft so probably uh, a lower a lower number there on the on the low end like minus three would have given me a more responsive craft although as is it is a very stable craft so don't think these numbers are, are bad or anything you could copy this for your design and be fine now that we have our tandem rotor pretty well built I'm going to want to demonstrate some of its capabilities for you. Yeah, make sure, you know, just double check everything, spring strength, rotor speed. It's just a good idea to double check when you're working with stuff like this. All right, I'm gonna demonstrate for you what's going on here. Now the RCS action group turns on the rotors. Then, by increasing the throttle, we increase the angle of the blades for the takeoff. You can see I have the rotors uh, up on the screen. I had some issues during testing where one of the rotors would drop its RPMs. So I have it up there to check, and I didn't have any issues on this flight. So I don't know what was going on. We don't need to go very far for a test flight. We'll just fly over here by the water and land. Again, very smooth, very easy to fly. Uh, I'm very happy with this design and actually I didn't show you the payload that I put in this when we built the craft. I'm going to land here and show just how much payload this thing was hauling when we flew over here. All right, I have an action group to undock the payload and we'll drive out this rover. This is a 50 ton rover. It's actually more than that. These ore tanks are full and this helicopter had no issues hauling 50 tons. So if you need a design like this and you need to haul cargo around Kerbin, this works very well. Now, this design is a useful transport, but uh, some issues I had here is that these rotors, I cannot control yaw. It's only done with the, uh, with, with the reaction wheels. Maybe if Squad were to give us some more tools for how to set up the cyclic and collective controls for our, our rotors, that would be better. It'd be a nice update if they could do that. Yeah, this thing lands so smooth, so easily. You can pinpoint wherever you want. There we go. Anywhere I want. 
<laughs> this thing's actually pretty fun to fly. Well, hey, thanks for joining me to discuss tandem rotor helicopters.